G'day, welcome to my video channel. I'm Ian Appleus, your acrylic guru from Australia, and I'm going to use a black canvas board today. You probably can't see it on my board there. I'll put some sizes up for you, and because I want to show a beginner what you can do on a black canvas. All right, and I'll get some colours going up the screen as well. So pause it and write them down so you know we're going to use there's probably not going to be too many colors in this it's going to be something simple but effective for you beginners to practice on all right and learn how to paint so let's get on with it all right now the only detail we're probably going to have is some uh, some setback mountains and hillsides and a fence i've just penciled it in i've just penciled it in to show you what i'm going to do but once the painting's on there you'll get a better idea how to map this design out okay. So from the top of my canvas, I wanna be dark and come down sort of like a space sky, coming from black to dark, deep purple to a white glare down to this landmass that we've mapped in down the bottom, okay? So I've got some Mars black, dioxine purple, and some titanium white out of the tube. So I'll first get the top half of the palette mixed with black and retarder because this is going to allow it to blend this canvas is just one that i did before and i didn't like the painting i just black gessoed over it ready to reclaim it for another painting which is what i'm doing in today's painting i've reclaimed the canvas and i want to come to about there with the black I'll keep the strokes up and down. Okay, I've got some retarder there, so I'm going to pick up the dioxine purple and mix that into the retarder so as we can merge this with the black, the transition will be welcoming to each other. All right, so I'll come from about here. Oh, why I started down there, I haven't contaminated this purple with the black yet. So I've got to about there. That can come down to where I'm going to put the white, the white glare. Okay, now I'll start crisscrossing that and bringing it towards the black. It'll start getting contaminated. I don't mind then because they're going to merge together. Okay, look at that. Pull that upwards just like that. That's wet and retarded now. Now we'll go for the white. So I'll get the retarder on that same brush. I've washed the brush. And I want to get this flowing white mixed with the retarder there. So I'll start from the bottom before I contaminate it. Get it up to that purple. Okay, now I'll start pushing it up to there. I don't want to contaminate all this white. I don't suppose it's going to matter. We'll see what happens. All right, we're getting to that dioxine purple now. So now I want to grab a blending brush and a fan brush. I want to get some just straight titanium white onto the fan brush and I've got a blending brush and my paper towel ready to blend. So this white on top of the black with the retarder is opaque. That's going to be covered up but I want this, we're only going to see about this much. So now I want to get this paint and I want to do this. Come from the white just something where we can get some beautiful artistic things happening on the canvas. Now grab your blending brush. I'm using a two inch blending brush, just one from the hardware. And I wanna blend this in a way that it's going to merge with that retarded and come down into here, into that retarded dioxine purple. And we're just creating something very artistic onto the canvas there.
I'm keeping it in an up and down sort of stroke. I'm not getting the brush this way. I just feel it's working great this way because I want it sort of up and down. Blend that out a bit. And then we'll put some other mist in the sky as well. Watch the whole video so you get a concept of what's going on. Because I've got a concept in my mind what I'm doing, but yous don't. So for yous to watch the video, it's your way of seeing what's in my mind. Now I've just done something very simple. I've cleaned that fan brush and I'm getting some clean titanium white. I'll use what I can out of there. Hate wasting paint. Get some on your brush. And, you know, I've got this glare here. I want to create something roughly where the the black and the purple are mixing. I want to create some glare in the sky. So I'm just stamping and mapping out an area. So let's say like that. I'll grab my blending brush again. And we want to sink that into the background colours. Okay, just sort of like doing some cloudy things. And it's going to go into the black to change colours up there. Now, it, it's fine like that. That's fine. But it's looking a bit flat. Is it? Yep, yep. All right. So let's just sp spark it up a bit just by doing that. And it's, you know how I put yumminess on clouds. This is probably sparking up the glare. We've got purple. But we don't want this too light and bright. I mean, it's a night sky. It's going to have stars in it. All right, we'll probably put something over here very small. Grab your blending brush. Oh, that sunk straight away into that black. But that's fine. I don't want it too bright. Probably can't see that with the glare. And I want to get something probably over here. I want to bring it, oh yeah, it's lifting up the purple, which is great. Okay, so we've got our sky top area like that. I want to pick up a toothbrush and the titanium white. I've added some water to it just so we can get some stars flicked onto the night sky. And you want to do these before you put your moon on because the moon is in front of stars. I have seen some where the stars are in front of the moon and the moon is a lot closer than the stars. So, all right, What I like to do with my stars I've done the stars right, just like that, see? Now, I like to sort of put a band, a thicker band somewhere. So I want to have my moon in the centre here. So I might just have some... So I'll, I just like to concentrate. Just a thicker band. In, indicating, you know, like, I don't know, the Milky Way or something, I suppose. That's just something I like to do. Now I want to put a moon on here, so before I put a moon on, I will like to dry this, okay? Because I'm going to use my template to put the moon on. Now this is dry, I've got myself a template for a moon. I want my moon about there, probably about there somewhere. I'll just off-center a bit. So I've just put some low-tack tape onto my template here. And if you don't have a template, make yourself one. or paint the thing yourself with a brush if you can paint circles but these are just simple all right so i'll put that about there got some low tack tape on there just to hold that in place now grab yourself a sponge tissue a brush something you want to map your moon in with and because the moon's in a um, black sky I will dampen my I'm going to use a pouncer a round pouncer you can get these from two dollar shops and craft shops these round pouncers they come in handy I'm going to use the grey and the white all right so I'll prime the white 
I will prime, I want to put the grey on there, but to get the grey on there, I need to prime it with some white. And work out if you want a full moon, quarter moon, a half moon. I'll try a half moon, see how we go. I'm twisting this, getting it ready. For, to take the grey, because the grey wouldn't sit on that black very well. That'll do. Now I'll give that just a bit of a rub on a towel to take a lot of the wetness. Now I'm going to grab the grey mainly on one edge of this round pouncer because that way I can control where it goes. <laughs> now, how dry is that? I want to add the grey now to this moon. The grey standing out on the black. Okay, that's the colour I wanted the moon, that's the grey. You might think, oh, you can't see the white anymore, Ian. It doesn't matter. If you want to add some, while that's still wet, if you want, you can, I'm just showing you as an example here, peel back some darker crevice like that in your moon. It's just that simple. Now I've washed that pouncer. Now I only want to load up half of it so I can control where this highlight goes. Okay. So I just want to load up because if I've got it all over this pouncer, I'm not going to, I don't want to muck up me moon up there already. And I want to highlight the left side of my moon with some white. There we go. Some more on there, just for this bottom area. Now we'll pull the stencil off. I just want to show you, I've got some white paint on my finger. You can even use your finger, if you like, holding your stencil and manipulate some highlights within your moon as well. Let's just fix that edge here up. But we'll pull that off. And there's our moon. Now I've got some uh, turquoise and just some soft flowing white paint and I want two values of this. Now I have the darker value and I want to get like, I don't know, let's say keep some of that light there. I want to keep some of this there like that. Let's hope that white's dried enough. Or well, I better dry this because otherwise it's going to muck up my paint. Now that's dry. I want to map this in. Okay, I'll get it a little bit damp so it's going to transfer off my brush a lot easier. I just want to map the top part of this hill area in. Bring it down just to there somewhere. We're going to have another one in front of it, but before we put the other one in front of it, we want to create some, you know, like nighttime atmosphere, glare or mist. You can roughen up the edges of this to make it more realistic as well. Put some trees there. Okay, now I want to grab the lighter shade that I mixed. I think I want it a little bit brighter than that. Okay, I'm just going to use the same brush. I'm, I just picked up a flat. And we're going to put another hill in front of this, but before we do, we want to create some glare. So I want to come up to a degree just like that. All right. And then we can use this, see, let's see if we can scrumble those two colours together. Okay, so we have dark at the top, and down here it's a lighter value. Alright, just picking up some more. Putting it on, trying to control the transition where it's going into the darker colour. 
just so the gradient of the two is smooth and gentle. So now we'll just map in another hill in front of that to set that one back. I've got some Payne's Grey here. Payne's Grey is sort of a bluey blacky grey. So it's not black. And we'll come in front of there and just create some sort of shape. I've blow dried everything there. that blue color so this isn't going to scratch into it and mud it up so we'll get that on there and then we can you know this can have a bit of a scratchy top as well like that I'll block that in and I'm just creating the tops of the distant trees on these hills out here somewhere like that we'll add some lighter value into this forward front hill just so we can see our bit of fence in front of it okay so I'm gonna just grab some of the that white flow white I had there let's incorporate some of that into there see the Payne's grey you can see what sort of grey it actually is it's sort of a bluey grey and I want to just kind of highlight this with some of this just brush it in and away and blend it back down and if you've done if you've done too much of it just get the darker Payne's grey again and go back over it, okay? It's that easy. But that'll do just a hint. So it'll pick up our black fence when we're going to put a fence on there. Okay, that can be blow dried. You can sit back, have a cup of tea, relax. Um, I think I might put a shooting star or a comet in there as well. Alright, I've mapped in a bit of a fence there with the cat sitting on it looking at the moon, okay? I don't mind a little cat, so we'll put that cat there. Now I'm going for straight black. So I have my carbon black here. I've just moistened it up a bit so it's going to transfer and flow off my brush beautifully. And we'll start with the post the cat's sitting on. And with a bit of luck, it's going to stand out darker than that foreground mountain you can lighten your mountain up a bit if you feel you want yours to stick out more but I will be get the top done I will be highlighting some of this fence anyway so this is like an old picket fence just something basic there I've just stabbed in some uprights there you can see you could probably even use a flathead brush for this a nice flathead brush would be great so I've picked up a flathead brush and you can just sharpen the top of that. Look at that, that's a lot neater than these ones here, isn't it? Now I've cleaned that flathead brush, I've got some titanium white, I'll just pick it up on both sides, just something to lightly highlight that. Now I haven't dried the fence because I don't want this to be stark white, I want it to bleed in with that black a little bit. So I want to, I'll, I'm going to highlight everywhere from the left. I'm just pulling it straight across the upright of the fence. And if you feel it's too loud, by all means, 
like I do there. I've just left some of the, haven't cleaned the brush. I want to, yeah, grey it up a bit. That's a lot better. It's a lot more subtle. Sometimes too bright can destroy your painting. That's better. So virtually taint your white with some of that black so it's pretty grey. Oh, that's a bit loud. And we'll just do the top of those railings as well. So we're grabbing some of the titanium white. We're mixing it with the Payne's grey. I mean the black here, just to get that value there. And we'll find the tops of the beams and very carefully pull them down. Only the top of that is a bit artist. There it is there. Because the light's at the top, obviously. Now, the detail police might say, oh, yeah, and you've got your reflection on the wrong side of the post because the moon's up above it's not to the left but put your moon where you want i'm just there we go how's that looking that's looking not too bad i'm just making this up as i go so if i'd known i would have but anyway Just like that, that's, that's good enough, eh? Now we'll put the cat in there, so get your black, have it tainted with some water so it's going to flow. I will make a traceable for this little fella. I like cats as you all know. So I'm just using a little filbert to silhouette his head. Even if you find an actual photo that you like, use that and just use the outline. It doesn't have to be an actual silhouette. Oh, on his head. Golly. Looks like a rat's head, a cat's head sort of comes down like that. But I wanted him looking up at the moon. I think I'm losing his... Come on, buddy cat. Gee, where's all that sauce for just his head? And now his back sort of arched onto that there. See how wet I've got the paint, but not too wet where it's going to be translucent. That looks more like a cat. I can't see properly. Yeah, that's all right. And we'll get the base of his body in there somewhere. I'm not going to highlight him. It'll just cartoon it right up. Just something like that. Obviously, so we'll get his tail wrapping up there somewhere. Okay, I just rubbed out the tail because it didn't look good where I had it. So we'll change it up a bit. Now I've got a round brush. Let's hope that can give me a nice round tail, a longer brush. We need the tail coming off here somewhere. That's better. But just where I had it, it looked a bit inappropriate. Okay, simple tail. 
Okay, just before we sign it, I might put a shooting star or something coming down here. So I've got my small filbert brush and I'm going to load it up with some titanium white. Grab yourself a steady stick. Uh, you want this a little bit damp, not too damp. You just want to get a nice sharp edge on the tail end of it. So I want the head of it about there. So I want to, let's say, put him have a bit higher up in the sky. Thin, and this coming thicker, boof, like that. And now I've got it in there, I've just got the titanium white without water. And I wanna get rid of the transparent look. At least that wet white was able to get the shape I wanted from my meteor, shooting star, whatever it is. There we go. And you want these reasonably straight because they don't have a wiggly tail on them. They're going that fast in space. They can't afford to go a bit wobbly. I want the head of it a bit bigger. So I'm just sort of manipulating the, the head of it. A little bit broader, wider, bullet shape, whatever. I'm just moving my brush in a way that I can control the, the shape of this. It's just a small thing, but it, the more pride you put in the work, you're glad you did when it's hanging on the wall for years later, but that'll do. Now that brush, I'm going to wipe the paint off it. Boom, 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 boom. I'll just trace a vapour tail on that so it's fading away. You probably can't see that, but I can see it. Now, in front of it, you're going to add some glare because that's damn bright, that meteor. Let's just say this is a meteor. See how easy it is to add glare to something? You've got not, a mu not much on your brush, but enough to stain your canvas. Okay. I'm just bringing the glare to the head of that comet so it doesn't look weird. All right, I'll just put my autograph down here. Okay, it's a simple exercise for beginners. So now you know what's involved. You can work out where you're going to have your cat and have enough light behind it to make him stand out. Work out the value you want of your front mountain to make your fence stand out. Because it is night time. You want to know it's night time, but you also want to see everything. And we've just got some space, night, moon, comedy, stars atmosphere happening in this painting okay and just practice this moon onto some scrap paper if you haven't done them before and see what different finishes you come up with before you actually do it into a painting all right that's not too shabby eh okay i hope you enjoyed this exercise i had fun doing it i'll think of a name for it and um give it a go and remember to take your time there's no rush in your art, okay? And look at the links in the description below. There's one for my art for sale. All my tutorial paintings are for sale, okay? So check out the link in the description below for that. All right, so if you like what you've seen today, you make sure you tell your friends, but if you don't like it, tell everybody, okay? All the best, goodbye, good luck, and good on ya!